Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Intermediate. Welcome, welcome to class 14. And as always, we're going to start today with a review of what we saw yesterday in class 13. So here we are. Yesterday we were talking about the verb to sell. The verb to sell in both the present and in the past. So today, or every day, I sell. Yesterday, I sold. So the pronunciation here is sell, which is the same as the word sell as in C-E-L-L, which is celda, the cell for example, a prison cell. Okay, so you have to be careful with the with the, with the word "sell," the verb to sell, and say "sell," not "shell." There is no there is no "h" in this word. Sell, sell. Today I sell. Yesterday I sold, ending in a d, which must be pronounced. I sold. So ask me if I sold a book last week. Did you sell a book last week? Did you sell a book last week? Yes, I sold a book last week. I sold a book. Ask me if I always sell books. Do you always sell books? Do you always sell books? Yes, I always sell books. Did you sell a book yesterday? Yes, I sold a book yesterday. Do the stores in Madrid sell olive oil? Olive oil? Aceite de oliva? Do the stores in Madrid sell olive oil? Yes, they do. Of course they do. They sell olive oil. Did they sell a lot of olive oil last year? Yes, they sold a lot of olive oil last year. Did you sell a car last year? Give me an affirmative answer. Yes, I sold a car last year. Do you sell apples? Yes, I sell apples. Did you sell apples last year? Yes, I sold I sold apples last year. How many apples did you sell? I sold 200 apples last year. 2000 apples, I don't know. I sold apples. I have a friend who sells apples, a friend in Canada who sells apples. He picks them. He has an orchard, and he picks the apples, and he sells the apples. He sells other vegetables as well. He sells carrots. He sells lettuce. He sells tomatoes, and he sells apples. Also pumpkins, pumpkins, calabaza, calbacín. I think calabacín, no pumpkin, nacho. Is that right? Pumpkin, the the or calabaza, the orange fruit which at uh, at Halloween time in North America they carve out to make a yeah a calabaza, a pumpkin. That's right. Okay, then we also looked at in the last class we looked at as far as I'm concerned, or as far as you're concerned. So, as far as I'm concerned, Spain is too hot in the summer. It's too hot here, which is why I always try to leave in August. I try to either go to the beach or I try to go to another country because I can't stand the heat of, of, a, of a summer in Madrid. It's too hot. As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, as far as I'm concerned... En lo que a mí respecta, en cuanto a mí respecta, as far as I'm concerned. So, as far as you're concerned, are the Rolling Stones a good band? Yes, as far as I'm concerned, the Rolling Stones are a good band. As far as you're concerned, is Bruce Springsteen a great musician? Yes, as far as I'm concerned... In my opinion, as far as I'm concerned, he's a great musician. As far as you're concerned, is tortilla tasty? 
Is it delicious as far as you're concerned? Yes, as far as I'm concerned. In my opinion, in my opinion, as far as I'm concerned. As far as you're concerned, is Alonso the best driver, the best Formula One driver? Yes. Is he? Okay, yes. As far as I'm concerned, he's the best driver. As far as I'm concerned. So be careful here. Because remember, we say in English we say driver, a race car driver. We don't say pilot. A pilot is for airplanes, and a driver is for cars.、Mm-hmm. As far as you're concerned, at home, do I sound like a giddy? As far as you're concerned, <laughs> yes. As far as I'm concerned, you, Kyle, you sound like a typical giddy. I suppose. <laughs> as far as you're concerned. Is Spanish an easy language? As far as you're concerned, in your opinion, yes. As far as I'm concerned, it's an easy language. As far as I'm concerned, Kyle. As far as I'm concerned, English is an easy language because I grew up speaking English. Hmm. As far as you're concerned, is snow nice in the winter? Is it nice to have snow in the winter? In your opinion, as far as as far as you're concerned. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, snow is nice in the winter, and in my opinion, in my honest opinion, it is nice to have snow in the winter. But I grew up in Canada, shoveling a lot of snow, having to remove a lot of snow, and、uh, after seeing so much of it, you get a little bit tired of snow, and、uh, you start to enjoy warmer weather. But when I go home for Christmas, I always see a lot of snow, and I'm used to it. At Christmas time, I I appreciate snow. I associate snow with Christmas, and I think it's important to have it. Okay, let's move on. Word of the day. All right, time now to take a look at our word of the day, and our word of the day is buscar. Buscar, which can be to look for. But today we're going to talk about the verb to seek, to seek, which is another way of saying buscar. But to seek, for example, with your radio, when you're searching through the channels, the radio itself often in English, if you have an English radio, it will say seeking. It is seeking channels, and you can seek upwards or downwards, moving through the channels, looking for the next available signal. The radio will seek for channels. People can seek、um, a reward, or they can seek, you know, seeking.、Uh, for example, in the in the classified ads, you can say a man seeking an apartment, or a man, man seeking woman. You know, looking for, buscando, searching for, seeking, seeking. What are you seeking in life? Are you seeking? Mastery of the English language? Are you seeking? I suppose a good level. You're seeking a good level of English, and you've and you've come to the right place because with this course you can achieve that. You can reach that goal, but you have to work hard. Okay. Let's move on now to talk about the future. That's right. It's time to get serious and start talking about the future. And by by talking about the future, I mean, of course, will. And going to, I will explain the difference. Are you ready? Be- are you ready? Because I'm going to explain the difference, and the difference is very subtle. Well, it it can be subtle. We have some specific cases when we mu- when we must use one or the other, but in reality, there are a lot of cases when we really could use either either will or going to. Basically. We use the future with going to, going to plus infinitive, and this is explained very clearly in your student guide here in class fourteen of your student guide on page twenty one, page well pages twenty and twenty one of your student guide, which of course I'm sure you're following along at home. We have the future with going to, going to plus infinitive for stated actions or planned intentions. Let's say, okay. I'm going to Canada next summer. I've bought my ticket. I'm going there. I'm doing it. I'm going to Canada. I'm going to visit Canada next summer. I'm going to see 
my parents. I'm going to see my family. I'm excited about it. Okay. But then we, so planned actions and stated intentions is a high degree of certainty. Then we use will in a number of different cases, which are again, outlined in the student guide, including spontaneous cases. So let's say, um, I drop my pen and I will say, I drop my pen and I'll say, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll pick it up. I won't say, I'm going to pick up my pen. I say, I'll get it. I'll pick it up because it's spontaneous. The telephone rings. The telephone rings. Ring, 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 ring. Oh, I'll get it. I'll answer it. I'm being spontaneous, okay? We also use it in offers. I'll take you to the station on Tuesday. I'll take you there. Don't worry. I'll take you there. I'm not saying I'm going to because maybe you haven't confirmed yet, but I'm offering. Hey, if you need to go, I'll take you there. We use it also in promises. I I promise I won't say anything about our conversation. I promise I won't tell anyone. I promise I won't do it. Or I promise I will do my best. We don't say going to. In this case, we say will. I promise I will do it. And then when there's a doubt, when there's some some degree of doubt, we will also use will. Ah, I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'll go. I'll probably go, but I'm not sure. I might stay at home. I'll in fact, I'll probably stay at home. So there's a certain degree of doubt. I'm not sure. We use will in these cases. So it explains these and it breaks them down in your in your student guide. But what you have to remember a few a few things, and I don't want to just reiterate exactly what's in the student guide because you can read that on your own. But basically, going to is a bit more certain. Will will is spontaneous, and also, of course, in the conditional, because in the conditional, in the first conditional, the future conditional, we have a certain degree of. Well, I mean, it's it's conditional upon something happening, so it's not certain at all. If it rains, I'll bring my umbrella. If it's cold, I'll wear my coat. We're not certain. I don't know if it's going to be cold tomorrow. If but if it's cold, I'll wear my coat. So I'm using the future with will in these cases, whereas again, I'm coming back to going to, the future with going to in the cases where it's more certain or I have a, a much higher degree of certainty and I expect that uh, that the event will take place. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Now I can get you to participate at home. I'm going to say one structure, and and I want you to say, no, no. For example, I'm going to open the door. And then at home you say, no, no, I'll open it. Okay, so I'm going to call a taxi. No, I'll call a taxi. I'm going to pay for the dinner. No, I'll pay for the dinner. Good. Okay. No, I'll pay for the dinner. I'll. And we almost always use the contraction. I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. Especially in first person. I'll do it. I'll call. Don't worry. I'll open the door. I'll pay for the dinner. Okay. I'm going to drive the car. No, I'll drive the car. I'm going to make dinner. No, don't worry, Kyle. I'll make dinner. Very good. I'm going to set up the computer. No, I'll set up the computer. Okay. So in this case, I'm giving I'm I'm giving you a situation in the future with going to, and then you're answering, you're responding with will. So there there are many cases where really you could use one or the other. And what's important, and I always tell my students, if someone asks you a question in one structure, make sure you answer in the same structure. So if someone says, will you be here tomorrow? You say, yes, I will. Will you be here tomorrow? Don't say, yes, I'm going to. It just doesn't sound good. You want to match the structure. The same, it it would be perfectly valid for that person to say, Kyle, are you going to be here tomorrow? Then I'll say, yes, yes, I am. Yes, I am going to be here tomorrow. I'm not going to say, yes, I will. If they, if they say, Kyle, will you be here tomorrow? Then it would sound much better for me to say, yes, I will. 
So again, you're matching the structure in the answer. Okay? Vocabulary of the day. Time now for our vocabulary of the day. That's right, the vocabulary. The first word, parientes políticos. In-laws. In-laws, that's right, in-laws. La moraleja. The moral. The moral. Suelto. Fluido. Hablando. Fluent. Buscar. Which was our word of the day, in fact. Look, our word of the day appeared in the vocabulary. To seek. S-O-S. To seek. To seek. Enorme. Enorme. We have a word in English, enormous. But here, it's more common to say Huge. Pronouncing the H. Huge. Huge. Very good. And now we have a, the phrasal verb to take a look at. The phrasal verb to get off. To get off. And I discussed this in a previous class when we talked about the phrasal verb to get on. We get on a bus. We get on um, the train. We get on uh, something that is public transportation or larger. We get on a boat. We get on a train. We get on the metro. Whereas we get into transportation that is often smaller or personal or enclosed. We get into a car. We get into a taxi. But we get on a bus. We get on a train. So if we ever get on something, well, we have to get off. Okay? So answer my questions. Did you get off the bus at the last stop? Yes, I got off the bus. At the last stop. Off. Two F's here. Off. Yes, I got off the bus. Where did you get off? I got off at Seoul, for example. I got off at Seoul. Did you get off the bus yesterday? Yes, I got off the bus yesterday. I got off. Now be careful with off. Off. Two F's. Off. The F sound. Off. When we have one F, it's pronounced of, of, of. So we have the F vocalized or voiced, which is essentially a V sound. But in this case, I'm talking about off, the opposite of on. You get on and later you have to get off. Two Fs, non-voiced, off, off. Turn the lights on, turn the lights off. Get on the bus, get off. Get on, get off. Well, I think I have to get off the radio because I'm completely out of time. So thank you so much for joining me. And be sure to follow along in your student guide at home. I'm going to finish now, but I'll be back soon. Talk to you then. Bye-bye. Bye.